beautiful. It doesn't get any more Van Brosen, Van Brosen, Gemitlichkeit. Ein Prosit, ein Prosit, der Gemitlichkeit. Well, I've heard it sung. I'm just trying to fit in. You're doing a great job. What do you think? This is uh, epic and historic and classic. And it's like a tidal wave of Munich coming at me. It's like a Cubist painting of, uh, of great Bavarian drinking culture happening all at once to my senses. <laughs> that is an incredible explanation. You grew up not here, but with this. When was the first time you came here? 14 years old with my dad. I had my first leader here in the Hofbrauhaus. House. Well, I can tell you that the first time I was here, I definitely felt a sense of home and a sense of belonging. Yeah. You know, and I think that, that that's something that I think is truly part of the Hofbrauhaus House experience. And I think as time went on, the idea of um, you know being in the full service restaurant business where I grew up. Right became less interesting and this sort of thing became more interesting. You have to be in a really bad mood and be committed to that, to not be changed, to just be glowing with happiness inside. You know, I think Walt Disney, you know, with the whole idea of the happiest place on earth, yeah. like, they're trying so hard to be the happiest place on earth, but this is it's, the happiest place on earth. It's just a good Bavarian beer hall, everybody. That's right. Yeah, I love it. You well, don't need a mouse in a castle, you just need a liter of beer. This is the pinnacle of yeah. Hofbrau life, so to speak. There are only 616 Stein lockers in the Hofbrau house, and it is incredibly difficult to get one. And 100,000 million people that would, beer lovers, that would like a mug. Absolutely, would like to have their own here. There are. And if, if, I'm a, uh, if I'm a billionaire from the States or Japan or wherever, and I just love to have a Stein here, a mug, it doesn't matter, right? To quote a lady who just said something to us, the answer is no. <laughs> You've got a better chance of getting Packer tickets than you do about getting one of these. <laughs> In addition to this, there are 3,500 what they call Stammgäste, okay. or Stammtisch guests. Those are different clubs that have a reserve table here a certain night of the week or a certain night of the month. Well, that's and what we see. They have the little sign they that do. denotes... They all have their own sign. And their names. Correct. And yeah. if it is their time, you have to get out of that table and, and let so, them sit. So you're having a wonderful time, but the Stomtisch shows up and it's like... You, yeah. So on average, uh, how many people roll through the Hop Raw House non-Octoberfest? Uh, around 3,500 a day on average, which is, which is indicative of the max capacity of the place. Uh -huh. but on a busy day, there could be as many as five to 6,000 people who come through the building. So here we are in the middle of the beer garden, in the <laughs> middle of the Hofbrauhaus. House. There's a, um, there's a term in monasteries where they have the little green space where they connect with the Almighty through that little, it's the, called the cloister. Yes. That's what this is essentially for the Hofbrau House. I have frequently referred to the Hofbrau House as the Vatican of beer. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> This is the, the Vatican. And I think part of the beauty of this place is that it is in fact alive unto itself. It's like an organic being, the Hopper House. It's yeah. 365 days a year. This is the atmosphere. This is the energy level. This, yeah. is, this is the heart and soul of Munich right here. Well, my only complaint to your tour so far is that I'm getting a little jittery because I still don't have a beer. I think we need to order a beer. I mean, let's get a mass. Let's do it. Danke. Yeah. Danke schön. And this beer that we're drinking here is a classic Münchner Helles, uh, a Munich, what they call light beer or a golden beer. Uh -huh. And that really has become the iconic beer of Munich. This is what they call the Hofbrau Original. Um, and it's, it's, it truly represents Bavarian lager. Freshness is everything when it comes to beer, and the yeah. fact that this beer is being depleted at such incredible rates means it's being re replaced with fresh beer constantly. Hans, I feel a little bit like, you know, stick a fork in me, turn me over, I'm done already coming here. But I know that we've got more places to go. We're just getting started, Kyle. <laughs> From here, we're yeah. going to make our way to the beer garden, oh, to yeah. the English garden, to some, see some beer gardens, and okay. then we will have the creme de la creme of beer social experiences at Oktoberfest at the Hofbrau Fest cell. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see every element of what I call Bavarian social life. Hans, you have 
taken me to one of the most beautiful outdoor spots maybe ever. Look at this. We got the water, we got the sunlight. This is, this is the Zay House, which means the lake house. There are several beer gardens in the park as well as on the perimeter of the park. But the beauty of Oktoberfest and also of these beer gardens is we can all sit down and come here with a different ideal, mm -hmm. but we can find common ground in sitting down and enjoying a beer together. Yeah. And this resonates with me like Esterbrook does. I mean, you're in this beautiful park setting. Uh, you're mixing with people from all around the city and the region, in this case the world. There's water nearby, in Esterbrook the river is flowing, but here we've got this great lake. Like it, it just feels like a place that you can settle in and, and, and be expansive. It, it's what a beer garden is supposed to be? I don't know, you're the expert. Yeah, you know, one of my big, um, like, primary points when, when even proposing the beer garden uh, idea to Milwaukee County Parks was centered around the idea there can be no fence. I, I always look at it as a, a sanctuary from urban life. Right. You know, um, yeah. yet it's, yet by creating the beer garden there, you create this, I, I, I guess, kind of a civilization mm -hmm. that allows you to incidentally enjoy the park. You don't have to plan, you don't have to bring a picnic basket. You can just say, you know, I've had enough. I want to go sit in a park for a couple hours and relax and enjoy myself and get some sun and have a beer. Thanks for bringing me to this sunny spot, my friend. You bet. This Prost. Is Prost. Just gonna have a little snack. Oh, that's good. On the way to the table. Feeling hearty, I'm gonna start with the pork knuckle. I know this is probably not the proper parlance, but I want a little crispy, I want a little meat. I think that looks like a good bite right there. I may have overdone it, but that is juicy, crispy. Porky deliciousness. Mm-hmm. Oh well, that's good. So why do we take this journey? Why do we start at the Milwaukee River in Esterbrook Park in the old German beer hall in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and come all the way to Munich in Bavaria? If you want to understand the heritage, the history, the true tradition of something, you have to go to the source. In 1810, Oktoberfest was begun. By 1860, there were more Germans living in Milwaukee than anywhere else on the globe save for Germany. And if you were coming from the southern part, Bavaria, why wouldn't you want to bring this grandeur, this sense of belonging, this sense of place and celebration? Why wouldn't you want to bring all of that joy with you? Well, now the task is to find Hans amidst 10,000 people in the Hofbrau beer tent. <laughs> Let's go. Hans! Kyle! <laughs> no coming! I found you! Half a million people here, 10,000 in there, and here we are in front here of the Hofbrau are. tent. Dude, you can bring it. Look at this outfit. This is some sort of... Trachtenmode. I feel like we are definitely not in uh, Milwaukee anymore, Dorothy. This is the real deal. You yeah. have arrived in Oz. Yeah. yeah. This is the Super Bowl, the, the Carnival, the, like, I don't even know what analogies. This is, this is Oktoberfest. It's Oktoberfest, right. It, it defies <laughs> analogy. It is the analogy <laughs> used for other things. Truly, yeah, yeah. So, behind us, is the Hofbrau, it's not fair to call it a tent. It's the Festzelt, which means fest tent, but it is truly um, a massive structure. Yeah. It's built every year, um, starting in uh, July. Okay, actually June, they start putting foundations in. July, start putting it up. It costs over a million dollars a year to put it up. And when this is over, within three to four weeks, there'll be nothing here but an open meadow. Wow. And you have seats for us up on a balcony? Yes, we're going to be on the balcony overlooking the whole sea of people down below. Well, I don't know what we're waiting for. I'm not shy. Let's go drink some beer. Yeah.
That's overwhelming. This is so exciting that it's the balcony of the Hofbrauhaus in Munich for Oktoberfest. This is like the opera box of beer and uh, with, you know, a few friends and beer enthusiasts. This is, this is the hookup. This is fantastic. inspiring to think about how many people are here from all over the world and they're all having a great time. But every 20 minutes they play one of two songs. The Hofbra House song or Ein Prosit. And roughly 10,000 people take a sip and how much beer is consumed? It's about a thousand liters every time they play the song. Everything here is served in glass, on china, with silverware, by service staff. So this is my first Oktoberfest. This is your 12th, 13th? Uh, I think it's my 13th, I kind of lost count. Your first time here is the best, nothing right? Nothing like it, There's right? nothing like it, I mean, it's a pretty awe-inspiring thing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, you look at this out here, this is humanity. So I'm about to descend to the belly of the beast. I have this much of my second liter. There's frivolity, there's celebration, and there's Gemeklerkeit. It's everywhere, really. It's impossible to be in a bad mood and be here. And it has nothing to do with the great Bavarian beer. Come Woo! with me. Woo! In a world where so many things are copied and choked on, this is the authentic experience. This is history. This is true German beer. This is, this is togetherness. This is a sense of place. There's nothing happening here except for people conversing, having great beer, toasting each other, and enjoying life. This is the spirit of how we live. This is Oktoberfest! <laughs>